Hey folks, I'm back in the Hessian Highlands for uh, some archery, some outdoor archery uh, at my favorite uh, 3D uh, archery parkour. The cool thing is they recently had a tournament here, um, so they changed the complete uh, parkour. So it's it's like a new one and it's really exciting. Um, some A lot of new targets, uh, a lot of new ways, it's like, like a complete new parkour and um, yeah some very difficult targets but anyway I'm enjoying myself here uh, outdoor in the woods and um, maybe you hear the horses in the background there is a, a big white um, a big, big white uh, area with some trees and grass nearby and uh, there are a lot of uh, horses outside today so today I also tested, um, finally tested the, um, using the two-handed sword and the longbow together. Um, we know that in the 16th century especially, uh, many Highland warriors were armed with uh, two-handed swords, commonly known as claymore, even though the term is not uh, correct. Um, however, we know that they used the two-handed sword in battle um, and it's always mentioned that they were using uh, um, bows and arrows uh, before they were using the swords and the long-handed axes. And it, it's not really clear if they had separate archers who were doing skirmishing and then the, the heavier armed warriors would use their two-handed swords in battle or if they um, were using bows and arrows and then had the two-handed sword. So when we see the Gallo glass um, sketch uh, uh, um, made by Albrecht Dürer in 1521, uh, we can see uh, an armored, um, an armored Gallo glass with his helmet, with his uh, with his chainmail, with uh, uh, a two-handed sword, and also with um, a bow and and arrows in his belt. So um, we can assume that uh, Highland warriors were similar armed in the 16th century um, and uh, that they were uh, using the two-handed sword and had also a bow and uh, arrows. So what I tried out was um, how was the two-handed sword carried? We have some, um, we have some evidence that uh, the uh, two-handed swords in Scotland were also um, uh, carried in, in a sheet. Sometimes some sources say they were slung on the back but um, there's a lot of discussion about that point too. Uh, so what I tried out was uh, using my training uh, two-handed sword um, and I was just using a baldric, a simple baldric I made for training swords and uh, I just carried it around with that and tried out to shoot some arrows and to shoot some um, uh, to shoot some arrows in different positions with the sword on my side and at one point you can see I also draw the sword and put it into the ground just to try out how, how practical was it to carry a two-handed sword in a, a, a standard baldric and doing archery at the same time. So my conclusion is 
that um, you can do it. You can carry a, a two-handed sword like, like the, the, the claymore in a baldric or in a belt on your side, in a regular sword belt, and you can shoot arrows. Um, of course, it's, it's uh, not so comfortable, um, but it's not impractical. So it worked, um, of course, with, with, I have to try it out with a little bit more, uh, you know, uneven terrain, with more like a battle mode, um, but uh, today I di here are also some other ar archers, families uh, with kids, and I didn't want to scare off the people with running around with a two-handed sword. <laughs> not not in these uh, crazy times, but um, I could do at least a first try out, which will I show you into in, in a minute. And my conclusion is, yes, it works. It's practical, you can do it. And um, for me, it was uh, even a little bit more difficult because I use my bow in the right hand and draw the string with the left hand. And uh, I carried my sword and my, my, um, my arrows. Uh, I carried both on the left side. So there was a lot of stuff dangling on my left hip. Um, so this was of course not so practical compared to when I would have my arrows on the right side or tuck in my belt or something like that. Uh, but still it worked. So even, even with this uh, more, um, you know, uh, impractical uh, um, uh, way of carry my sword and my, my arrows um, in the quiver, uh, it was it was still uh, practical. I could still, you know, shoot uh, some arrows, and uh, it didn't hinder me so much. So, um, yes, for this first try, I would say uh, thumbs up for the for the uh, two-handed sword uh, in use together with uh, with uh, with uh, um, with a bow and arrows. And I will do some more tests in the future, um, maybe in some environment where I. I'm not so much surrounded by other people, uh, but uh, yeah. So stay tuned. I will I will show you um, more of this stuff, and I will also put down a link to uh, a video uh, which was recently published by uh, my buddy uh, Tom from uh, Fendavi Dozi, and um, he made it uh, together with another uh, uh, online uh, uh, chap, online friend. Of mine, I exchanged a bit about uh, Gallic archery and 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 broadsword and stuff. Call Matthewson, he has an excellent article about uh, Gallic archery. I will put down a link to the the um, to the video of the news video of Tom, where he is talking about uh, different types of arrows and arrow making. And um, I will also put down a link to the excellent article on Gallic archery uh, written by Call. So um, check out the links down below. And and I also want to thank uh, all the people who supported me already on, on Patreon. It's amazing. Um, since uh, I launched Patreon, uh, my Patreon site, uh, I already have uh, some, some, some people supporting me, some patrons. And this is really amazing. Thank you guys. Uh, this really helps a lot. And um, it, uh, it motivates me to, to keep on going, to, uh, to do more research, more videos, write more articles, and so on and so on. So thanks a lot again. Um, your help is really appreciated. Uh, this is great. You guys are awesome. Thanks a lot.